Welcome to Nightmare County. I'm your host, Rando M. Ghoul. I want to thank you for tuning in for this video. It's a video that should have been made a long time ago, but hey, here it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get to the uh, straight to what I was wanting to talk about. This is probably a contra controversial take on within a martial arts movie uh, community, but this is my take. It's my opinion. Uh, and I just want to go ahead and get it out there. I honestly believe that the most important martial artist and one of the most important martial art movies to exist to have a big influence on American audiences and I'd say other parts of the world as well to get people to get out there uh, get in a martial arts class of some kind or get in a better shape is without a doubt that movie being Bloodsport. I, I, I can't, I mean it's I honestly believe that this movie, I honestly believe that Bloodsport is an important movie for martial arts. I mean, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I'm not saying that Jean-Claude Van Damme is the best martial artist, but I have to, I, have, I think he is one of the most influential martial artists, um, for, especially from the 80s. And I think he had a big impact on American audiences. Because, like, growing up, I knew a lot, when I went to school, and even when I went to college, when we talk about martial art movies and stuff like that, we would talk about what got someone into martial arts. Most people would say Jean-Claude Van Damme. I mean, me personally, me, I'd always say like Bruce Lee, or someone like uh, you know Jackie Chan, or even. But I would even I would have to admit, that watching Jean-Claude Van Damme's movies, especially Bloodsport, was also a big influence on wanting to learn martial arts altogether. Um, and it, I mean, you can't. I don't think you can take that away from the movie at all. I'm not going to take anything. I, I still believe that Bruce Lee's probably the most influential martial artist uh, and uh, actor ever. Period. I, I mean, there's two. You, you, I mean, the format that he, when he, what he came in and did is revolutionize martial art films and really push forward uh, a, a new style and everything. And I think that's incredibly important. Uh, I'm not taking away from any other martial artist from, ever before, like from the, the Shaw films or anything like that. It's just that I honestly believe that Jean-Claude Van Damme was, had that big of an impact. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Chuck Norris. I love Chuck Norris's movies. Um, but when you really look at like the amount of martial arts done in a Chuck Norris film, it's very little. I mean, I would say maybe 3 to 5% of the film is actually any kind of martial arts. It's either, and most of it's done with guns or a vehicle or anything or something like that. But I love Chuck Norris movies. But I would say after like Octago uh, the Octagon, most of his movies relied on heavily on guns, and uh, that's probably why the movies before uh, any movie after Octagon, the ones that we came before, those are my favorite. The ones after, I love them. I love Lone Wolf McQuaid. Don't know, I love that movie, but I still look. That's not, there's not a whole lot of uh, martial arts in the movie. I mean, it's like maybe 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes total, probably. Whereas with Bloodsport. You got a lot, and you got, and it was like the first time seeing on a movie where there were so many stalls being presented, and I always thought that was awesome. Uh, I love seeing all the styles, and me and my friends would be sitting around like at lunchtime or at the playground. We try to tell like we didn't even know what those stalls were at the time, but we would try. We we we'd all seen the movie. Of course, all one, everyone thought Bolo, you know, was just this massive, you know, Herculean. Uh, Force uh, as for a villain and everything. Of course, I know him from uh, Enter the Dragon, and then you see him in Bloodsport and uh, Double Team and all these other fl flicks. And you know, he was just he had an awesome presence on film and everything. And it, it's what was, it was always awesome seeing Bolo, a Bolo in a, a fl flick. But seeing all those styles, it, it kind of opened you up. Like, man, there's a bunch of different st type of styles of martial arts. And of course, of course, I would say back in the '80s. Being in a small town that didn't know that there was all these different styles of martial arts. The only thing I ever knew was wrestling and boxing, some judo, and uh, I think there was a taekwondo class uh, in a big city, not too, uh, kind of uh, about an hour away and everything. That was it. That's all we had ever heard of. And then here we are watching Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know, with his, his form of like kickboxing and everything, and savat, and then... Um, and then you got to see all these different styles from Muay Thai to everything else. And it was just, it was awesome to see on, on a flick. And then, of course, you got what Jean-Claude Van Damme do right after that? Kickboxer. And 
I mean, it, it is solidified as Jacques Condem is someone who is incredibly influential in making films that showcase martial arts in a way that would influence young minds to want to get out there and learn how to uh, learn how to do this stuff. And then on top of that, get in shape. Uh, I, I think that's incredible. I, th I mean, of course, in the '80s, I mean, when you saw Flick, when you saw Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Van Damme, you saw all these guys, and they were really in really good shape. And of course, that caused people to want to get out there and get in shape as well. Of course, uh, I mean, I mean, Chuck Norris was in shape and everything. Steven Seagal at that time was still he was in shape. I mean, he was he was, still, he was in shape at that time and everything. But I think. And I'm not saying Steven Seagal didn't have an influence with his flicks. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of people who went out there and want to learn Aikido and everything. But uh, I still think Jean-Claude Van Damme was the biggest influence from the 80s on American audiences and certain other parts of the world to learn martial arts, hands down. Uh, I think, like I said, I think Steven Seagal did. I don't think American audiences really knew anything about Jackie Chan at the time, it was, or Jet Li, or anybody else. It was really... Uh, Bruce Lee from you know the 70s that was the bigger influence don't get me wrong you had Jim Kelly you had all the other martial arts from uh, Shaw Brothers and Golden Harvest and everything all those actors who were doing but I don't think I and mean, don't get me wrong everybody was wanting to learn Kung Fu and other forms of martial arts during the 70s but the 80s was like this big push it's like everyone saw Jean-Claude Van Damme it was like BAM Let's all do this. And I just, because all these kids, I mean, I just remember all these kids wanting to, and we did these versus who versus uh, whoever battles. And we did the, who would win in the fight? Van Damme, Seagal. Van Damme, Stallone. Van Damme, Schwarzenegger. Van Damme, uh, Bruce Lee. I mean, of course, I'm always, I was always going to throw my uh, head over on the Bruce Lee side because I was just, I knew who Bruce Lee was while everyone else didn't. And of course, a bunch of other actors and stuff from, uh, from Hong Kong and everything it's just but not, not everybody just watched a bunch of crazy flicks like I did um, but like I said that's why I'm saying for American audiences Van Damme was a very big influence on everybody especially everyone around me in getting to learn a martial art which I, or some form or whatever and um, it was a big reason why I got into Muay Thai and everything because I saw a kickboxer and I was like I, want, uh, I learned what I could from kickboxing and then I want to learn Muay Thai but, you know, that's just how it is. It's why I love martial arts movies so much. I mean, getting to see Bruce Lee, of course, that's solidified me being a martial arts movie fan probably my entire life. But then when you get to see someone like Jean-Claude Van Damme in a movie like Bloodsport, showing all these different types of styles, it just made it so more, so much more epic and everything. Of course, you had, you had a, a, a well-directed movie a, uh, with great music. I mean, you can't deny the music in a Bloodsport being influential as well. I mean, uh, people would go on to uh, Kickboxer, and then, of course, it was just, it was just, it was awesome. But I honestly believe that Bloodsport is a big influence. I don't want to make a big video on this. I just want to, I, just, I guess, give a hot take. I do believe that Van Damme is one of the biggest influences of the '80s to have an influence on people to get into martial arts and to get in shape. Um, I think it's why we all st like he still has a. I mean, even though his movies don't come out the, uh, theatrically anymore, he still has a big influence today. Despite him, uh, most movies going straight to DVD or Blu-ray or straight to streaming, he still has an audience who get out there and they watch his flicks. Same thing for Seagal. I mean, I used to work at, well, back when there used to be a blockbuster. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't imagine how many times people came in and rented a Steven Seagal movie. I don't care. This is even the time, after the time that he uh, exit wounds, uh, his, his reemergence in popularity during the late 90s had died down. He started making uh, some really cheap uh, action flicks and everything, like Into the Sun and everything. That was, it was everything, his movies were still pretty good or decent, despite what you think of as a martial arts, or you know, whatever. He was, um, people, loved his movies people would come came in and rented his movies all the freaking time and we can never uh people were all that it, they were always rented out same thing with uh shock Claude van damme though also despite their popular had dying down had died down despite the popularity had died down after during the late 90s or early 2000s they were still people love to still go rent their movies that's why it never, it never made sense to me maybe people weren't going to the theaters to watch their movies but they certainly were renting their movies 
at the uh, rental store whenever, whenever I worked there at Blockbuster and everything. And it was a uh, that was it was just crazy to see. It was thinking everything, but uh, so it was always kind of sad to see how the action stars of the '80s and how they're like by the late '90s or stuff. They, you know, of course they a lot of them didn't update their style and everything for the way the movies were being made. I think that's a testament to a lot like um, the fact that some of these they made a comeback. I mean, it's nice to see Lundgren, uh, Lundgren and stuff, uh, see Dolphin stuff. It, you, not seeing Rosie seeing Schwarzenegger. I mean, he's making stuff, but not like it, like he was. But Stallone, man, Stallone just hasn't stopped. But neither has Sean Claude Van Damme. He really hasn't stopped. He's continuing to make solid action flicks, regardless, up until th this very day. And um, it's nice to see in everything. But I think honestly, it, attribute that to Bloodsport. Um, I mean, yeah, I know Van Damme made other movies before Bloodsport, like. Uh, no retreat, no surrender, and everything. But Bloodsport solidified him. I would say, even, I would say, Kickboxer did as well as an action star. I mean, think about it. Up into, I guess, Enter the Dragon would have an influence as well as, but Bloodsport having the format of like this fighter this is this versus this fighter. And you had Street Fighter come after, come out, uh, you know, when it came out and more combat. They all had that format. And then more combat used the attributes of all these fighters you'd seen in movies before. And of course, one of them being John claude Van Damme is Johnny, basically is Johnny Cage. So, I mean, come on. That's how big of an influence uh, I think John claude Van Damme was. I think that's why he's important. And I think people shouldn't forget that. They should, uh, he should get the recognition that he deserves as being a very influential martial artist for a lot of kids to get out there, um, get in shape and learn a martial art form. Uh, I think that's, a, that's, that's that's saying a lot. I mean, he I, I don't say I'm not putting him up there with Bruce Lee. I'm not saying he's a better martial artist than Bruce Lee or anybody else. I, he is a good martial artist, a good actor when it comes to martial art films, and because uh, the movies were always fun. But Bloodsport and him are just I think are, are incredibly big influence on people from the '80s that are on out. And uh, I think still to this day, people are still finding his flicks and they enjoy them. And that's when you make a movie that the world remembers over, I mean, renowned, it's renowned all, all over the world. Sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. That says a lot, you know. That's what more could you ask for as an actor or even as a martial artist for people to remember you for something that you made and you entertain them and you influence them. That's, that's a big deal. And, um, that's all I really wanted to say. I honestly believe that he's one of the most important martial artists in the 1980s, and Bloodsport is one of the most important martial art films from that era to to, uh, to exist and to have an influence on people in such a way. Um, you can't. I mean, people make T-shirts with Bloodsport. I mean, come on, people make T-shirts uh, paying tribute to Bloodsport, uh, and video games, so on and so forth. It's you can't you cannot say that it's one of the most influential martial art movies uh, ever and it, it has to do with the format how the movie was made how it looks the music and Jean-Claude Van Damme that's and Bolo everybody that's in that movie uh, are just solid all, all, all the way around and uh, I always forget the guy's name but I think it's Daniel Gibb he's the uh, personally he was always my favorite so yeah Donald Gibb uh, Donald Gibb I don't know why I, yeah, but he I always enjoyed I mean Revenge of the Nerds and everything is ogre but it was he, he's very fun in Bloodsport and I, that, that's I always kind of saw him as the hacksaw Jim Duggan of wrestling for a martial arts movie I mean it's just uh, and what's funny is growing up where I came from I know a lot of people that looked and acted just like Donald Gibb and uh, in Bloodsport um, anyways, that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, it, it was not a very long video. I just want to say, I hope you don't get too mad at me. And I hope you don't get, hate me or anything. But honestly, who do you think is the most influential martial artist from the 1980s? And what movie do you think is the most influential from the 1980s? Uh, if you don't think it's Bloodsport, I'd love to know. We can talk about it. Uh, I'm not going to argue with you because there's so many great martial art movies from the 80s. This is just personally what I think. And if you agree with it, great. If you don't, hey man. That's awesome. That's what it's all about, right? Um, 
and comment below on the video. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to my channel because I greatly appreciate it. And also give a thumbs up. And um, yeah, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Nightmare County. Or if you want to look me up, just Randall M. Gould on uh, Instagram. Where I, I actually, that's pretty much all horror focus. Whereas Nightmare County, I kind of just talk about whatever. Um, that, I hope you like this video. And um, like I said, comment. I love to hit back and we can argue, kind of, <laughs> or whatever. I hope you like this video. And don't be a stranger in. Tune in.